When it comes to annoying video game sidekicks, we've got to talk about Slippy from the Star Fox series. Slippy here. I'm okay. Among this frog's larger personality defects is his constant need of rescuing and inability to shut up for more than three seconds at a time. You did it! I was worried for a moment. At number five is Navi, your fairy friend from the Zelda series, who will not stop bugging you. If I hear, hey, or listen, one more time, I swear to God, we are turning this video game around and going home. Listen, listen, listen. The fourth spot is occupied by your sidekick in Def Jam Fight for New York. No, literally, it's a sidekick. In this game, you get text and voicemails on it telling you about your next fight. Hey, man, it's Blaze. I'm glad the iPhone came around. Number three is Hupo from the Klonoa series. <laughs> Our main gripe is how he constantly introduces himself despite nobody caring who he is. This is Klonoa. He's from Wind Village. And my name is Hupo. And my name is Hupo. And my name is Hupo. I'm Adam from X-Play. And no one gives a who you are. And I'm Hupo. Second spot belongs to Sheva from Resident Evil 5. We'll keep this quick. Get out of the way. Get out of the way. Get out of the way. God, you suck at being a sidekick. That's why I'm your partner. And who else could be number one but America's favorite flying fox, Tails? This is terrible. Oh, sorry, that's not my cell phone ringing. It was my gaydar beeping so fast that it produced a ringtone. But obviously, that's not why we object to Tails. I mean, he's sort of the ultimate nuisance. Eardrum piercing voice? Check. Let me help. Ability to state the obvious? Check. It looks like the princess was moved to another location. Lack of any clear purpose? Check and make. <laughs> I'll do my best. See you in hell, my friend. Ever since Sega folded its game systems department in 2001, Sonic the Hedgehog has been bumming around like he caught knuckles with his girlfriend. Sure, he showed up in some games for his former competitors, but his heart really wasn't into it. But with the release of the surprisingly good Sonic Generations, it looks like the Hedgehog is finally feeling a bit better about himself. And just like getting over a rough breakup, it was Sonic finding himself that led to this inspired new game. Now, while most of us may require therapy or booze to help us rediscover ourselves, Sonic finds himself his old self with the use of a time machine. I can't believe there's two of me. One of the benefits of this time travel plot is a collection of greatest hits levels pulled from the last 20 years of games. The place where this game falls down a bit is in button responsiveness. And for anyone who was stuck with Sonic through the dark years, none of the levels will feel new. So hardcore hedgehog heads should be warned, all the content isn't entirely fresh. Place has given me deja vu all over again. But even with the retread levels and the sluggish responses, it is nice to see Sonic back on his feet and pulling off what feels like his first good game in a decade. That's why we give Sonic Generations four <laughs> other fish in the sea. Surprise! Out of five. Metroid Other M seemed to hold promise when it was first announced, but now it has arrived, and holy crap, it sucks for so many reasons. Hang on tight, Metroid fans, this is gonna hurt. The story is a far bigger part of the game than in any previous Metroids, and it's a big part of the problem. The conspiracy side of the tale is just fine, but mostly it's concerned with Samus and her vast, sweeping insecurities related to her past. Samus's characterization in Other M is absolutely unacceptable and frankly insulting to her fans in general and female fans specifically. This woman has saved the galaxy half a dozen times over and she's standing around moping over this Adam guy in long droning monologues that sound less like the most badass bounty hunter in known space and more like a 12 year old girl reading her journal. Confession time. So come around with your life. You. This is one of the strongest and non-sexualized female characters in gaming, and now she's constantly showing us her ass and mooning over this utterly personality-free Adam guy. She's so submissive to him that the reason you don't have your power-ups in the beginning is not because she doesn't have her power-up abilities, but because she decides not to use them until Adam says it's okay. 
Sam, I'm authorizing missile use. Dude, you couldn't even open the front door without Samus's help. The third person action is a blend of Ninja Gaiden and Metroid and works pretty well aside from the inconsistent auto aim that's forced on you. First person view is the only way to shoot missiles and scan things and you're stuck standing still during this. The problem is that you control third person with the Wiimote held sideways and first person by rotating the Wiimote and pointing it at the screen. So there is always a moment of, wait, where's my reticle every time you switch to first person? Boss battles basically consist of finding enough time to switch to first person and fire off a missile without being creamed. But hey, if you run low on health or missiles, you no longer have to kill enemies to replenish them. You just hold the A button and concentrate, and your health and missiles refill. Yes, Samus gets more missiles by thinking about it really hard. It's stupid. Metroid Other M is a giant pulsing morass of bad decisions. Two massive thumbs down out of five. Because we get tens and tens of emails every year about our negative viewpoint of the Sonic series, we here at X-Play will strive to create a fairly positive review of Sonic Colors for the Wii, starring everyone's favorite Azure rodent. I mean, Blue Hedgehog. Colors takes our hero on a trip to a nefarious carnival created by Dr. Eggman. It's up to you to save the aliens being held hostage for their powers by using their powers for yourself. Yes, it's a story better left on the floor of Friedberg and Seltzer offices. Better left in slash fiction forums. What fans of the series have come to expect? I know I say that every time, but this time, really, nothing will stop me. Remarkably, this is one of the best-looking Sonic titles to grace the Wii, which is like saying it doesn't remind me of a clown in a blender. It doesn't make my eyes bleed as much. That the development team finally put some of those creative juices that they've been hoarding on the shelves into designing rather interesting environments like industrial candy lands. And maybe I was roughed up by a TSA agent a little too much, but even the writing seems to have improved. Either being used for their magical powers by an evil man, or to make underwear to be worn by Sally. <sighs> Unfortunately, Creative Juice doesn't go nearly as far as it once did since so many of the levels are about as boring as watching The Mentalist. C-SPAN 2. Slightly more entertaining than Skyline. It's these wisp aliens that can give Sonic new powers or completely transform them into something new. Too many stages, however, are based around these slow, clunky, counterproductive powers that work against the main mechanics the series is so noted for. Speed and platforming. Perhaps the one thing that Sonic Colors gets right is being the most 2D, 3D game on the Wii. Uh, I find that hard to believe. <laughs> so when the game is not boring, not slow, actually acting like a Sonic game, fans of the series might just find a glimmer of hope in this beautiful mess. That's why we're giving Sonic Colors a 3 out of 5. Welcome to the grid. Now that you've seen Tron Legacy, you're probably curious about what happened in the time span between the two films. Oh wait, I just remembered. Nobody cares what happened between the movies. But that hasn't stopped the developers from creating a half-baked clunker of a game that answers a lot of questions that no human being has ever asked or wondered about. I think you would have preferred death to this. Oh man, death is sounding so good right now. Things start off with a brief explanation from Kevin Flynn who is strangely performed by a different voice actor doing an impression of Jeff Bridges. Free will, man. Try programming that. That is a terrible dude impression. I still can't get over it. Anyway, things have gotten more complicated in the universe of Tron, and Flynn has created a security program to solve some unexplained anomalies. And that's where my new system monitor security program comes in. I wrote it to get things under control. More chore than game, Tron Evolution clumsily tries to incorporate Prince of Persia-style wall running, but the developers couldn't match the finesse of that series, and you'll fall over and over again. You see how not fun this jumping sequence looks? It's exactly that not fun to play. The camera is far too zoomed out, and at some times it has no idea what you want to be looking at. It's like the whole thing is being filmed by a 12-year-old kid who stopped taking his Ritalin. We have to get to the bottom of this. We won't spoil any plot details, but we can promise that the talky storyline will put you to sleep faster than a handful of Ambien. It seems this Abraxas virus was once an ISO. Okay, I'm bored. 
You can ride light cycles, but you don't actually battle with them. They handle like Vespas, and the driving sequences in the game are just there to get you from point A to point B. Granted, the light tank is a fun diversion, and there is one other positive. Time for a new course. We love the way you can hop seamlessly from the single player campaign to multiplayer matches at disc upgrade stations. The downside is that the multiplayer itself is a bit of a mess. Maps are frequently too big for the game types, and the matchmaking is worse than Charlie Sheen and any of his wives. It's way past games now. If only this were a way past game. Prime Evolution gets two awkward screens. <laughs> Out of five. You like Sonic the Hedgehog games? But do you think you would prefer them if they actually did not have Sonic the Hedgehog in them? Well, you're in luck. Yeah. We've got a hedgehog game with absolutely none of the stuff that makes the Sonic games cool. Here's our review of Shadow the Hedgehog. The Legend of Groundhog's Day states that if the groundhog sees his shadow, we can expect another six weeks of winter. If there are legends surrounding hedgehogs, it might go a little something like this. Shadow the Hedgehog sucks. Sadly, it's become painfully obvious that Sega has no idea what to do with the Sonic franchise. And instead of letting it retire peacefully, they slapped some lipstick on it, told it to stop crying, and made it go out and dance for another night. First of all, the gameplay is a letdown. It reminds me of what my ex used to say. I'm not mad at your hedgehog, I'm disappointed. Sure, the basic elements from the Sonic Adventure games are here. The large levels filled with obstacles, enemies, and secret paths for collecting rings. But the character control is ridiculously awkward. Shadow spends most of his time gliding about like an ice skater with a brain tumor. And this game has worse camera control than Michael Bay. Every maneuver is made doubly difficult thanks to that infernal camera. Oh, get over! And in some bizarre attempt to make the game edgy, Sega thought it would be a good idea to introduce firearms into the mix. The result turns out to be the exact opposite of a good idea. What's that called? Oh yeah, a bad idea. Sure, you get to blast enemies, but you spend most of your time hunting for ammo and virtually no time running really, really fast, which is what the whole franchise is based on. What's worse is this game could be construed as racist. The Black Aliens. Black Aliens. Eliminated by the Black Aliens. Black, Black, Black Aliens. Eliminate the Black Aliens. Kill them all. But we must stand united to defend our world against these invaders. That president seems a little too concerned with the real estate value of his planet now that the Black Aliens have moved in. I bet if it were white aliens, everyone would be all hugs, smiles, and welcome baskets. The tragic part of all this is that any hint of racism makes real hedgehogs cry. But enough of this negativity. Let me think of something good to say about Shadow. Something good, something good. Ah, here we go. The levels. They're big, and there's a lot of them. The only other bright spot in this game is this guy. It's time to make all final preparations for our ritual. It's good to see Dr. Claw getting some VO work after Inspector Gadget. We actually dug up some of the outtakes in that recording session. Let's take a listen. Does it say, I'm going to fet you, Shadow, or is that a typo? Get you? Oh, yeah, okay. Three, two, one. I'll get you next time, Shadow. Next time. What? No? Okay, I, I just thought I'd throw that in for the fans, but okay. It's your destiny. The power emeralds are... Oh, sorry, guys. My bad. Just one second, one second. I told you never to call me here. Seriously. Later. Sorry about that, boys. Okay, let's back to one, back to one. Ultimately, this shadow leaves us completely in the dark. We give Shadow the Hedgehog a one out of five. Damn it. Shadow, your obsession with the so-called misdeeds of the black aliens is more than a little offensive. Did you ever consider that the white aliens may have just been doing the same damage, but through corporations or discriminatory laws? Ways that are accepted by the gun-toting hedgehog policing the streets. Hedgehogs that would shoot a brother dead if they found him in the wrong neighborhood. So essentially what we're saying is race war is the only answer. Right. For the record, I'm 164th Indian princess. Oh.